All right, slope. So the first thing to talk about is just the word slope. When you think of slope, you probably think of a hill. Going down a slope, if you've ever gone skiing, right? Um, slope actually describes how steep something is. So if you have gone snow skiing, there are different levels of skiing, right? Bunny slope, that's where we start. Uh, this is not a steep slope at all, okay? You're not going to go extremely fast. Um, and then you get into like different diamond level slopes. You're going to go a little quicker on those, okay? Because they're steeper. And so when you talk about the slope of something, you're talking about how steep it is. Um, we talked a little bit about something like stairs, how steep stairs are. Um, I visited Mexico many, many years ago and went up some of those pyramids. Those are steep. I mean, those stairs are very, very narrow and very, very tall. And so when you go up them, they're not the most difficult thing. But then when you turn around and go down, you realize how very steep they were because the narrower versus the height makes it steeper. And so um, when we talk about slope, we are talking about how steep something is, the incline. The definition here um, is the rise over the run, the vertical change, how far up you go compared to how far across you go. Rise over run, rise over run. And you will see that um, written like this on the coordinate plane. Rise is your Y value, how far up you go or down you go. Um, run is your X value, how far left or right you go. Um, it is written as a ratio. So your slope is gonna be written as a fraction um, it is also going to be denoted with an M. So when we start doing equations, when you see the letter M in linear equation, it represents your slope. All right, vertical change over your horizontal change, rise over run. So in your little handout, you will see that at the very top, rise over run, it represents your slope. All right, there are ways to find your slope. Um, when you're looking at your handout here, uh, if you are given a graph, you can literally count, all right? You can literally count um, how far you are moving, counting your units up or down, counting your units left and right. Um, and that will give you your slope. You are literally counting from one point on the line to the other point on the line. And so if I were to want to find the slope of a line, I can just pick any two points. Now you're gonna to wanna to pick a point that is specifically on crosshairs. By that, I mean, you're not gonna to wanna to say, oh, well, that's about one and a third. You know, you wanna actually pick one that's clearly on the line itself. And so when you do this, if I were to choose this particular one here, let's zoom in a little bit on it. Um, this is the first example in your book. If I were to zoom in on this, I'm going to pick two points that are clearly on um, like a crosshairs type point. So if I were to pick this one, I can see that that is at the point one, two. And then if I were to pick another one, I can go up over here, right here, and that's at the point negative one, three. And so if I wanna figure out how this is changing, I'm gonna look and say, well, if I go from one point to the next, and we'll just start at the far most point here, you can just count. The first thing you're gonna count is your rise. Are we going up or down, first of all, from left to right? We're, from left to right, we're going down. So like if I'm going, like I would read in a book, from left to right, I'm gonna go down, okay? So think about your why. If you go down, is it positive or is it negative? It's negative. So if I'm just counting here, I'm going down one. That is my rise, negative one, I went down. Run is how far I go over. So I'm going to count. I go over how many spaces? Two. Do I go right or left? Right. In the x and x value, right is positive. So my slope here is negative one half. You don't have to write the negative with the one. It just basically goes in front of the fraction itself. So to find your slope, you can literally count from one point to the next. If you look at your handout, the slope represents the rate of change. It can be written as a fraction in simplest form. All right, so if you can reduce the fraction, reduce it, but you're gonna wanna leave it as a fraction. It can be a whole number, so if you get like two over one, you would write it as two. That would be simplest form. But one half, you would not wanna write it as 0.5. We're gonna leave it right now as a fraction in simplest form. So you can simply count 
If you go up, go from the far left to the right point. If you go up, it's positive, down is negative. Right is positive, left is negative. You can very quickly look at a line and tell if it's going to be positive or negative based on how it's going from left to right, okay? So think about how you read. If I'm reading this from left to right, that's going up, as if you were going up a hill. This one, if I'm reading from left to right, this guy's going down, right? Always from left to right. So from left to right, up, positive slope. From left to right, up, positive slope. From left to right, down, negative slope. So you can very quickly look at a line and decide if that's going to be a positive or a negative slope. There is a formula for slope. So there are gonna be times when you are handed a graph, that's beautiful, you can just walk it. But there are going to be times when you are just given two points on the line. And if you are given two points on the line, you are going to want to use the formula for finding slope. The formula for finding slope is y2 minus y1, that is your numerator, over x2 minus x1, that is your denominator. Okay, so rise, that's how much you change up and down, that's your y value, over run, that's how much you change left and right, those are your x values, all right? So, um, on your handout, you have that little space to put that formula, that's a formula you're going to need, you're going to use that over and over and over So let's talk about using the formula. All right, so I often get asked the questions, well, how do I know which is the one and which is the two? It actually does not matter as long as the ones that are in the group have the same number. So I mean by that, I can label this guy x1, x or y1, x1, y1, x2, y2, all right? Or I could label it the other way. This could be x1, y1, and this could be x2, y2. It doesn't matter as long as in the group they have the same base number. So let's do this slope formula, and we're going to do it both ways. All right? So the first way I labeled it with the x1s and the y1s, it says to do x y2, which the first way I labeled it was 1, minus y1, which is negative 3 over x2, 4, minus x1, which is 2. All right? If I do that, I will get 1 minus a negative 3, that is 4, over 4 minus 2, that is 2, that reduces to 2. All right? Let's see what happens when I do it the other way if I labeled it this way here. This way, y2 is negative 3 and y1 is 1. The other way I did it, 2 is x2 and 4 is x1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. So it does not matter which way you label it as long as the groups themselves have the same sub number there. All right? Use x values in the denominator in the same order that y values are used in the numerator. So you'll notice that I went in the order this way to this way here, this way to this way here. They have to be in the same order. So you're basically walking from 
negative two up to positive four, okay? So how many spaces do you go from negative two to positive four? You start down here at negative two, then you go negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. You count it up, right? So you should have gone six up, right? That's your numerator. And then x value, you go from three to four. So if you're at three to four, how many spaces did you go? Right. And that's all we've done with subtraction. So if we did y2 minus y1, you would get four minus a negative two. And then x2 minus x1, four minus one. You're gonna end up with six over four minus three, sorry. Six over one, you're gonna get six. Because, which depends, it doesn't matter which way you went, you're gonna end up with a positive. So if I go from this direction, zero minus a negative one, six minus a negative eight, that's gonna be plus a positive, plus a positive. Or if I went the other direction, negative one minus zero and negative eight minus six, I'm gonna get negative one over negative 14, which is still gonna give me a positive. When you are given a graph, determine the rise of the run from one point to the other, and then write the ratio. So when you're given a graph, you can literally just say, how did I move? I went from one Y value to the next Y value. That's my numerator. From one X value to the other X value, that's my denominator. And it's going to be a fraction. When you're given two points, you're going to want to subtract. Subtract your Y's over subtract your X's. Just make sure you subtract in the same order. All right? So when depending on what they give you, might determine how you solve it. Let's look at some special cases here. All right? Let's look at these two lines. We're gonna do it, we have a graph, so we're just gonna walk it. For this first line, my numerator is going to be my y value, or my up and down. How far did I go up and down from one point to the other? Zero, right? So if I go from this point to this point, I don't go up and down at all, so my numerator here is zero. For my denominator, I went from two, two to seven. All right, from two to seven. So I moved how many spaces? Five. Yeah, so I moved five. What is zero divided by any number? Zero. zero. So my slope here is zero. That will always be true for horizontal lines. My slope will always be zero because I'm not going up at all. Let's look at the vertical line. My y value. My y value goes from negative two to four. How much did my y value move? Six, Six right? My x value went from 3 to 3. How much did my x value move? Zero. What's the problem here? Uh, what is 6 zero. divided by 0? Can you divide by 0? No. You cannot. Actually, this is undefined. All right, undefined. The slope of any vertical line is going to be undefined always. And out, the slope of a horizontal line is always 0. You do not have to calculate it. You do not have to do your formula. You don't have to walk. If you have a horizontal line, all right, it is going to have a zero slope. It's like walking on a flat plane. You're not going up and you're not going down. The slope of a vertical line is undefined. That is straight up, all right? That's not a slope at all. That's just going straight up vertically. That is undefined. Those are two special cases for slopes. So if I can figure out my slope by walking, I can also graph by walking, all right? So they want me to graph a line that passes through a specific point and has a specific slope. Um, they have given me the point. Think of the point as your starting point. The point they gave me is negative one, two. So if I am graphing this line, I am gonna go to my starting point here, which is negative one, two. That's right here on my graph. And then they gave me a slope of negative one-third. Now, we have to think about how we can get negative one-third. There are actually two ways to get negative one-third. We could have a negative one over a positive three, or we could have a positive one over a negative three. We're actually going to walk both directions. Remember, your top number tells you up and down. So if I start with this slope, my top number is negative one. Do I go up or down? Negative one. Down, so I'm gonna go down one, 
And then my bottom number tells me left and right, positive three, left or right. Right, so I'm gonna go one, two, three. That's gonna give me this point right here. Now granted, any two points will be, I can graph a line, but just to show you that it's the same slope, we're gonna graph the other point as well. This guy tells me a positive one. Is that up or down? Up, so I'm gonna go up, positive one. And then a negative three, left or right? One, two, three. That gives me this point right here. If I were to graph these, you should see that they are on the same line. All right, so if I were to take a straight edge and line it up here, you can see that no matter which direction I go, I ended up on the same line. All right, because they are the same. Negative one over positive three and positive one over negative three give you the same slope. All right, they give you the same slope. You only need two points to graph those. So if you had to graph this, you could choose either one you wanted to to graph. I also want to say positive slopes work the same way. So if they had given me a positive slope of let's say one half, let's say they told me that was the slope, that could be positive one over positive two, or it could be negative one over negative two. Those are both positive one half, right? So anytime you're given a slope, there's two options on how you can move. Two options on how you can move, and they'll actually be on the same line. Reminder, up and right are positive movements. Down and left are negative movements. page 241 uphill and we're always talking left to right so these are your four possibilities for your slope uphill is positive downhill negative straight across horizontal zero slope up and down vertical undefined slope all right so for this one you just want to draw four lines that all have negative slopes then figure out your slopes and compare them figure out your slopes and compare them all right, so um, 
compare how steep they are is what you want to do, right? So you want to draw four lines. It doesn't matter what you draw as far as, far as lines go. They, you want them all to be negative, all right? So you see you're going to draw four negative lines. You want to draw some of them steep, some of them not steep. And you want to see the difference in their slopes. The ones that I drew. This one was a slope of negative five halves. That's about negative two and a half. This was a slope of negative one. These were the steepest of my slopes. Negative two over five, negative one over 10. I'm approximating that because I don't cross two of them. Um, you'll notice that the larger the absolute value, the steeper the slope. And I'm saying absolute value because obviously negative five halves is not a larger number than negative two fifths. But the larger the absolute value, the steeper the slope, all right? That goes for positive and negative because we're talking absolute value, steep slope. So the larger number you have as your slope, the larger absolute value, the steeper that hill is going to be. So you represent it with a fraction. You do put your positive and your negative in front of it because you do need to know if you're, it's a positive or a negative slope. But when you're talking about how steep it is, we're talking about absolute value. The larger absolute values will have a steeper slope. And they're going to be represented that way. These on your graph, this is what was in the book. Positive slopes, negative slopes, zero and undefined. If you want to do a visual on this for what those slopes look like, you can draw. All right. Homework.